That's what happens when you try to squeeze into a couch to answer questions. <laughs> oh my gosh. We are sitting on like... Without a couch, but a love seat. Zeev, you have to make room for me. Put this on behind. Can't. Put that arm behind, that has to go behind. We are so excited, welcome back to our channel. Today we are doing our first official Q&A on our vlog. If you're new to our vlog, thank you so much. Please subscribe, like this video, and turn on the post notifications. We have a new video launching every single Friday. So if you're coming from my Instagram, I submitted a little question box, and we are going to answer your questions today about relationships that our relationships or just relationship questions that you guys have in general. We don't know why we look like we're at a baby, um, like a, a gender baby shower, we know a, we gen a gender <laughs> reveal party. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, stop it. So let's get into them. Okay, how did y'all meet? We got a lot of questions asking us how we met. Stevie and I met at a club at a lounge down in the New Jersey Jer Shore. In Jersey Shore. Ooh, oh, wait, do it, Steve. You're good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was working as a cocktail waitress at this lounge avenue down the mm -hmm. Jersey Shore. It's in Long Branch. It's really beautiful. Kim oh, Kardashian so came there once. I met her when she was like dating that football player, Milo. Was that his name? I was basically sleeping or just watching a movie, getting ready to sleep. And then uh, I was watching this movie, Yes Man, where basically he just says yes to everything. And then my friend, Mike called me up to see if I wanted to go out, and I really didn't want to go out at all. And then I was, you know, after watching that movie, I just said yes, and then that was it. I, I, I put my clothes on, I changed, and then we went over there, and um, we went to go eat dinner first. And then after that, I was leaving, and a friend of mine was throwing a fake uh, grand opening party for a, a gym that he never even opened, and we decided to just go upstairs with them anyways and that's where I met Christina. Yeah, and he had no idea about this party. Like it just so happened to be that yeah. when they were walking out of the restaurant We we ran into an old friend. And I was Again, it was a fake grand opening. The gym for a never fake opened. Gym. I was working at the at the lounge as a cocktail waitress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's how we met. I got her number and then I texted her that night and then we pretty much were hanging out almost every day ever since. Ever since. Actually, I'll never forget the moment I saw him because I was walking out of like the back, back of the bar, like back of the restaurant. And um, I was holding like a, I think I was holding a bottle or something. And I was like walking through doing my job. And I remember being like, oh, he is cute. And he is checking me out. And I remember being like, I was creeping on her a little bit. And then I think it was like literally a minute of like five, 10 minutes later, he came up to me. And that was it. And that was it. Um, okay, someone said, what was the first thing you noticed about each other or were attracted to? She just had a nice nice aura about her. Oh, that's nice, Steve. Mm -hmm. You could recognize that through the club? Walking through the club. She stood out. With your she stood aura out. On fleek. Yeah, she stood Was that even a real song? No, I just made it up. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Wait, what about? I'm going to say it. The first thing I noticed was your appearance. Because okay. I was like, oh, he. I think I noticed your height first. Oh, so you're the one that noticed height. Yeah, but you, that's why it's funny that you said it to me. Oh, okay. All right. So. I guess we both I'm a tall but... woman. I'm 5'10 and a half, 5'11. And then I'm 6'4. So right, and with heels, I'm like 6'2. Yeah. So, like, tall people, honestly, like, it's just a thing. Like, you notice other tall people, and especially, like, I'm a tall woman. I'm, like, not like someone who's, like, super skinny or petite. Mm -hmm. So, I've always wanted, like, a big, tall man. And I feel like I saw you, and I was like, oh, he is cute. Oh, and he's tall. So that was the icing on the cake? Yeah, yeah. I noticed oh. this face though first, and then I noticed your shoulders, and then your height. Oh, well, thank you. In that particular order. Have, okay, someone said, have you ever been long distance? If so, what advice do you have for long distance couples? Um, not really. We haven't been long distance at any, I mean, for short periods of time. What? Oh, oh no, what, in the beginning? Yeah. In Italy, when you were in Greece? Yeah. Oh yeah, but that was just, Okay, can I, I, can I like tell that weeks. story? I totally forgot about that. Yeah, but yeah. Stevie and I, okay, we met, and then we were like pretty much inseparable. Mm -hmm. And then randomly, Steve was like, I want to take you somewhere. And I was like, what? And I was like, actually, I'm going to Greece with my sister for a month. And he's like, what? And I was like, yeah, I was, like, this, I was working as a cocktail waitress just to make a bunch of money to travel around Europe for the summer. That was like my whole plan. And... 
Steve was like, oh, you're going to Greece? He's like, well, how about we meet in Italy instead? And I was like, what? Who is this like romantic man that wants to meet me in Italy? We only knew each other for a month and then we went to Italy where we spent like three weeks together. I remember being so excited because I was super into him. I was like, I can't believe this is happening. It's like so romantic. This is so exciting. And then I had like a whole thing of like, holy crap, I don't really know him that well. What if he kills me? Okay, but someone said, if so, what advice do you have for long distance couples? And I feel like my advice would be put, you. it's like you have to put in the effort and put in the time. Like yeah. Steve was really good about the second year I was leaving, he's like, wait, well, how do we communicate? And he went and got like the Skype account mm -hmm. and the webcam, which to me was like, oh, he really wants to talk to me. That's really thoughtful. And I and was on vacation like, in Greece yeah. and I made the time to go to these internet cafes and talk to him. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you have to think about it long term like what's going to happen in the long run you know like are you looking to move wherever this person is or are they looking to move where you are um that's a good point because if it's gonna be long term forever then just to be honest with you it's probably not gonna work at some point something's gonna happen yeah i actually that's a really good point like um, one of you has to get right yeah somebody has to you're give. not gonna be like long distance for your whole life yeah somebody, so i guess you need to like think about that we are so yeah. uncomfortable i don't know why you just le <laughs> lean back like that and because, just push my whole body up because i was Anyways, uncomfortable here i'll just do that for okay. now you can hide back there for a second okay um yeah one of you has to give at some point so i mean i wouldn't think about that too early on but Think about that at some point, you know? And if you don't think either one of you is, is planning on doing that, then don't don't even bother. I, I mean, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I think Because it won't work. I mean, we can have a long-term relationship forever. No, I you mean, can't do that. Yeah, so somebody has to compromise, and if they don't, then it's not worth it. Someone asked, what is your arguing style? Arguing style? I think our arguing style is like short and quick, but like, Intense. Not well. Not even that intense. But we'll get mad, and then we'll have we a bad. We'll quickly. have an argument about something, and really be annoying. And Christina might jump out the car and, no, and just say, I'm, "I'm taking an Uber home," and this and that. And then <laughs> I, 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 I don't normally do that. I'll just like sit there and be quiet, or or I'll flip out and then just be quiet after that. But then uh, shortly after that, it's, we're pretty much like. Over, over it, you know? it, yeah. Yeah, you're emotional and you get angry too. Yeah, but you're more like, you're not as good of a communicator as I am. Like I feel yeah, like when I, we fight, I mean, probably... it's like always me bringing things up. Like you're, you're more likely to hold something in. Yeah, no, that's true. I'll hold it in and then uh, once it gets to a certain point, then I'll, I'll kind of like snap a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just get over it. Um, someone said, Tips for living with each other for the first time. First time. I think for us, um, we moved here from from New York together, New Jersey together, and we started fresh. We mm -hmm. did not have a single thing. So it was, I think it was a little bit easier because we were starting a life completely together. It yeah. wasn't like we were necessarily merging our lives. I feel like that could be a little bit more challenging. Um, I think some and, tips are to have patience and to compromise, really compromise. Pa patience compromise and stay busy too. <laughs> like for one for instance we had to buy all new furniture everything and steve insisted on the ugliest tv stand in the entire uh, human man. race in the I entire like population it, of the world it was the ugliest tv stand it's just the glass tv I mean, and after glass a while i was like you know do. what this is the only thing he really has like pushed about just give the the man, his stupid TV stand. And was it that big of a deal? It bothered me for four years. I mean, nobody else complained about it. It was a nice glass TV stand. But I compromised. But somebody you know? has to be easygoing. I'm definitely more of the easygoing one. That I just would just be like, whatever, just do it. If that's what you want, just do it. Because I don't want to deal with like the headache of going back and forth. So somebody needs to compromise at some point. Mm -hmm. Or you both need to compromise so you can both be happy with the situation. But, uh... Compromise, what was the other one? Patience. Patience, comp uh, compromising, and communication. Patience, communicate anything that's like bothering you. And then also stay busy because you don't want to be around each other to that like 24 7. Yeah, that's a good point. Because then you'll start getting on each other's nerves, especially in the beginning. Yeah. But I do think um, if you're living for each other for the first time, there's a lot of stressors that come with it, but you have to honestly look at the bright side. Like, this is so exciting. Like you are moving in mm -hmm. with your person, someone that you're so excited to be with. Don't let the little things bother you. Like I, I'll be honest, 
there's times where I was so mad at Steve for like dishes and stuff like that. And then with the dishes. And then um uh, don't even get me started. There are so many times I was mad at like Steve with dishes and I would like vent to my friends and they'd be what? <laughs> I don't know anything about this. This is so much more comfortable. <laughs> I don't know. Why are we so freaking dumb? Okay, we have to adjust. Wait, see, do we? I think I don't, I don't think we look like we have necks right now. <laughs> well, like his heads on shirts. <laughs> Someone said, "Do you ever have crushes on other people?" Um, no. I mean, if you, it depends what you mean by crushes, like. If you mean crushes, like, oh, that's a good looking, you know, that, that person's good looking or whatever, that's different. But if you have a crush as far as, like, that's somebody you want to be with, then that's a problem if you're in a relationship or if you're married or dating, you know, dating somebody. Then yeah. You probably shouldn't be with the person that you're with if you have crushes on other people. So, no. The answer is no. How old were you guys when you got married and how long did you date for? So, I was 34 mm -hmm. when I got married. Well, but you were... I was 29. 29. And we were dating for like seven years before six we got Well, we, we got engaged after six years. We got engaged on our six year anniversary. And then we were married. engaged for like a year, a little yeah. over a year, and then we got married. All right, I guess so we did. We did it about seven <clears throat> years then. It took you a while to propose to me, Steve. Six years? Yeah, it was a long You're time. You're lucky I waited for you. You're lucky I waited just had for to, you. you know, just had to, you know, I'm sure of a couple things. You're such a jerk. I had to put it through all the scenarios. I have been with my now fiance eight years and I'm only 23. E, best part of your wedding day. First of all, congratulations. That's exciting. Yeah, congrats. Hope you guys have plans to get married soon. I would say the best part of our wedding day, gosh. The I best think, part of the wedding day? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the, the the ceremony in the beginning was really nice, mm -hmm. right? I enjoy, I personally enjoyed that because it was like a traditional Greek wedding, which I had never obviously experienced. The part of the ceremony that I, I liked the most was Christina coming down the aisle. Actually, no, no, no. My favorite part, because so with the Greek weddings, you have to like go around the altar three times. Yeah, we had a traditional times. Greek wedding. I don't know, this might sound bad, but I honestly think that one of my favorite parts of our wedding day was after the wedding was over, we had we got married at this incredible chateau. It was so, so, so beautiful. And um, we stayed there overnight, and it was so fun because what they did is they brought all of our cakes and mm -hmm. all of our desserts to our rooms. And I kind of liked it because after the wedding was over, it was just the two of us where you could actually talk to each other and reflect mm. on everything that just happened. And I feel like that for me was so special because your wedding day goes by yeah, so goes by fast. Like and obviously we were together like most of the day, but I feel but like we almost yeah, like we weren't able even... to like take it in and like yeah. reflect. And I feel like that was the first time when I was able to be like, oh my gosh, like that was, we're married. Holy crap, we're married. Like this yeah. is amazing. Yeah. How long have y'all lived together? We've lived together for seven and a half years. Yeah. Almost eight. I mean, yeah, seven and a half, yeah. This, um, also, what did your family think about Steve at first? Uh, that question's for you. I don't know. Um, I think they like Steve. I think that they were, I, Steve was the first guy I've ever brought home. So I, and I was so young, so I don't know if, like, they took it so seriously at first, but they liked him. Like, I remember, actually, it was, like, our third date, and I'll, my brother came with mm. us. We went to Six Flags oh, yeah, for the right. day. And then... Mm. Also, by the way, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but apparently Alexander didn't like you after that date because he thought you were too touchy-feely with me. With you? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't know. But my brother is nine years younger, so at the time he was like anything, young. Anything so, was touchy-feely. Yeah, so I think he old. was just like, you know, he wasn't nine at the time, but he's nine years younger than me. So I think oh, he was, was he, just 12? like uncomfortable. No, he was probably like 12. 13 maybe. Yeah. Um... And so is Steve also Greek? If not, what is it like for the cultures to collide? Steve is not Greek. He's 100% Italian. Yeah, I'm 100% Italian, but the cultures are very similar. Very similar. Una fata, una raza. That's right. And I feel like I'm more Italian than Steve is anyways. I don't know about that. But Christina does speak better Italian than I do, so I'll give her that. Yes, I do. What does Steve think is your most annoying trait? Oh, man. There's a lot, huh? There's a lot of them, but... I would say the number one 
which wouldn't seem like a big deal to some people, but for me, it's like it's like nails on a chalkboard. Oh my god! Is like is the gulping noise. I, I don't, don't know, I, do this. Whenever Christina drinks something, it's always like. <laughs> that is not true. Always, it's a genetic thing, though. Her mother does it. Her <laughs> brother does it. It's on your mother's side for sure. <coughs> but anyways, that that is like nails on a chalkboard for me. Um, there's other things too, but that's that's gotta be number one. That's gotta be number one. Should I answer this about you? No, they didn't ask. They didn't ask. You. They asked me. All right. The gulping noise. What's your secret to a healthy and awesome relationship? Communication, compromise, patience. Yeah, pretty much similar to the other question. Yeah. Um, yeah, all those things. And it can't it can't be like one way or the other like one per one person's decision like all the time or vice versa because then you, you got to have like balance in the relationship otherwise eventually it'll explode mm -hmm. even if one person's like more easygoing than the other mm -hmm. or like there's an alpha and a beta in a relationship which there, there always is but somebody regardless of of that there has to be balance yeah there I has agree to be too. balance otherwise it won't work. Mm. Have y'all ever gone through rough patches you felt you wouldn't overcome? Yes. Yeah. I, probably in the beginning more than anything. I actually feel like in the middle more than anything. Or Yeah, or maybe in the middle. I don't know. For me, it was in the beginning a couple things that I, would, I was just like, ah, this, this might not work. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. But as time went on, then um, not really. Just like, like... You kind of get used to having arguments like here and there mm -hmm. and just like obviously you have to address whatever is causing the problem and if you don't then it can you know snowball into something much bigger yeah but as long as you address it there's always going to be something there's always going to be problems in a relationship but uh if you compromise and you like put work towards it then um it'll work out so along with questions for steve and i about our relationship we also asked you guys if you have questions for us as far as relationship advice, mm -hmm. and we got some good ones, so I'm gonna read them. Okay, someone said, is it ever a good idea to get back together with an ex? I, mean, I think it depends on the circumstance. Yeah, it depends on the situation. That's like so hard. If it was like it an ex it that be... like was verbally abusive and cheated on you, then no, absolutely yeah, not. No, That's a terrible don't idea. Even, don't even waste your time, it won't work but out. But maybe you guys were just like at a different point in life, like maybe Bad you were younger, or or like yeah. different cities. Like you never know what the situation is. People grow. I think it's all situational and circumstantial. Yeah, def definitely. That can go either way. Okay. Someone said, do some men actually like curvy girls? Yes, they do. I mean, it depends, and it, it also depends on what you mean by curvy, because that could mean so many different things, right? But like, I think, like the whole old school mentality, like the stick figure is like, is like the body that guys love. It's not true. Like guys, most guys at least, in my opinion, um, like curves, and I think that's like, um, I think that's kind of like a instinctual thing, you know, like. Like like it's like guys are programmed to like that. They're not programmed to like because they want like childbearing like, hips. Or yeah, they want like the childbearing hips. Yeah. Do you think they don't that... want that? Like you know what I mean? Because there's nothing there. Someone asked, "Were you initially intimidated by Steve's body?" Yes, I was. On we were going on our second date, and Steve asked me if I wanted to go to the beach mm -hmm. or if I wanted to go to the zoo, and I honestly was like. <laughs> Hell no, am I going? <laughs> I'm serious. I was like, Hell no, am I going to the beach with this guy? I'm not letting him see me in a bathing suit. So we went to the zoo and we actually had so much fun. And ironically, fun. then we spent like a month together in bathing suits because we were around Italy. Italy. Man, but remember that kid? Wait, hold on. Remember that kid at the zoo? Oh my gosh, this boy, this poor young fella. Crapped his pants. Definitely crapped his pants right in front of us. It was bad. I'll never forget that. Oh, the memory. Totally off topic, but yeah, sorry about it just that. popped into my head as soon as you said the zoo. That um, but I was intimidated by Steve's body at first, and were you intimidated by my Grecian goddess the figure? Grecian physique? <laughs> no, I wasn't. But 
not like I wouldn't get intimidated by either person's body and then it's not just because I was in shape or whatever I just don't I just don't think there's like a reason for it you know Someone... it's not something to be intimidated by I agree you know? if the other person doesn't like you then screw them like totally. go somewhere else you know also, okay, this might be like TMI, but I was on a podcast the other day and we had this kind of topic mm -hmm. and the girls were saying how like, and especially when it comes to being intimate, they're so scared, especially if it's a new person, it's like they're scared of their body, especially if they have like some fat or like cellulite or whatever, they're so nervous. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I mean, I was intimidated by your body because I liked you, but I also came from like a family that always was like any man is so lucky to be with you so mm -hmm. i think i like carried that too mm -hmm. um but don't you think that like when it's time for like women and men to be intimate for the first time guys are insecure too yeah definitely i feel like girls don't realize that yeah, as much both people are insecure but, but I, I almost feel like men have more to be insecure about probably i mean it depends what yeah. if their thing doesn't work yeah a lot of people a lot of guys have that issue where they're worried about that yeah but i think I think in being intimidated by those things are what causes the problems. Fine, maybe. Because if you if you just go in there and you just don't even care, then it's like that that confidence is attractive. But like the real confidence, not just trying to put on a show, like that real confidence that you are confident in your body and like you're confident with yourself. Someone said, "How do I stop being boy shy?" Don't overcomplicate it. Um if there's somebody that you like, just like go for it. Cause you never know, like you never know what's going to happen. But if you're shy and shy, always shy around that person. And again, shyness is like, sometimes like comes off as insecure or whatever that isn't attractive. So just go on it. Like be chill, just go for it. And if it works out, it works out. And if it doesn't, then like, it wasn't meant to be, it wasn't meant to be you, you, you cut it off quickly. So you don't waste any more time. You can go find somebody else. Maybe. One, one important thing. Don't waste time on people who aren't the right fit or, or might not be the right fit. You know what I mean? Just try it out. We I have, I have a good metaphor or an analogy. Stop it? trying to make a circle fit into a square box. Yeah, exactly. Cause it's never going to happen. Right. And don't like wish for it to happen. Cause there might be a perfect, circle that fits into that circle <laughs> right yeah but then you're missing out on that circle because you're worried about the, the triangle or something and also like i think that at the end of the day like you can't really people don't change like people can adapt or yeah. you know what i mean but like you don't want to you can't really try and change someone and you don't want to try to force you don't want to force it because they're that, not going to be happy and then you're not going to be happy and it either. won't be real either it'll just eventually that'll that'll unfold Oh, how to navigate the dating world and keep high spirits. I think that you need to go into the dating world. Open-minded. Open-minded. Yeah. And open-minded, excited, but also knowing that the most important relationship that you have is the one that you have within yourself, with yourself. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. You don't need to find someone to be happy. You're already confident. You're already happy on your own. And you're excited to find someone to share your life with, but not someone who you need in yeah. order to have a life i feel like that's the wrong way to go about it yeah. and i feel like if you find that inner peace and that inner confidence then you can go out dating more confidently and like invite someone into your world instead of trying to make them your world because that right. i feel like could be like a little suffocating for both parties that yeah confidence is a big thing again it, it goes back to confidence like when you're on these dates <laughs> if you're like doing Gosh. the dating apps or whatever mm -hmm. and you're really looking for somebody then like confidence is key because if you're if you're off then they're going to be off too and you might and it might end up jeopardizing that that whole date where that person might have actually been the right person but they were feeling nervous because you were nervous or this or that or whatever but anyways but not only not only that but also like loosen up your standards a little bit like if you're looking for a six foot oh my god didn't you were gonna say that I was gonna five say that too. okay six foot five guy i have has... wait can i tell the story real quick all right yeah i have a friend ran some of you might know her you uh, blow up a spot like that? Yes, I am gonna blow up her spot like that. All right. She is newly dating in LA, and she was talking about how it's so hard to find guys on dating apps, and how she had to like change like her, um, I forget like the field entries on him. Like the filters. The filters, right. and I was, she's like, I had to lower the height, and I was like, hmm. What did you have the height criteria as? And this girl had it as six five. I'm like, and above. and above. I'm like, are you out of your mind? Like, how many six five guys are out there? Like, put it six one, six two, something. 
Yeah, because you just, might be missing out on a guy that's six three or six four. That might have been perfect, perfect for, for you, you, just for that extra inch. Yeah, and I also just think like there's certain there's certain things like that you have to be willing to like look past at first. And like, but it's not even look. It's not. Or, even, or wait, it's not no, wait, I have another it. thing. It's I have not another even looking thing. past it because you might actually like something that you didn't think you would like. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like you can't be like. So high strung at the beginning. I just think you need to take the first date, and if they ask for a second date, unless you hate that person, I think you should take a yeah. second date too because well, you never know. Like people are weird on first date; they might feel awkward. Like the second date, yeah. I think can, like you learn a lot more. Someone said, "I love you both so much. How do I leave my comfort zone, being a curvy woman afraid of being ugly?" Hmm. I think we kind of answered this a little bit before that. You need to get out of your own head. Men like curvy women. You're gonna find someone that's right for you, but you're not gonna be able to do that like looking in your mirror or like being at home, feeling sorry for yourself. You need to put yourself out there and every single time you put yourself out there, you'll feel stronger and better about yourself and become more and more right. confident. And, and I think what a lot of people do is they're always worried about being ugly or whatever the case may be, but it's like, you're the one thinking that. Because people aren't outside looking like, oh, that person's ugly. Oh, that person's really ugly. Oh, that person's good looking. Whatever. There are people that do that, but it's like, who cares about those people anyways? Those people are losers, in my opinion. Because that's all they worried about is like talking trash about other people, and like that means that they're not secure with themselves if they do that. Yeah. So if those people are out there, which they are out there, <coughs> those people aren't worth anything anyways. So don't even worry about that. The people that are actually like valuable to you aren't people that would do that. That's you thinking that. Right. So let that insecurity go, just be happy with yourself, and then you'll see like things start to happen. And also stop talking negatively about yourself. That's awful that you think that you're ugly. Like That's just yeah. such a bad mentality to have. You need to look in the mirror and focus on things that you love about yourself. Stop focusing on the one thing that you hate. Um, okay, someone said, do you have tips for ideas for meeting people, I use the apps, but have had no luck. I, I mean, I think the best way to meet people is through friends. Oh, I thought you were gonna say the gym. Or the gym. <laughs> the gym. The gym's not a bad. The place gym's either. not a bad place. The gym, actually, bring that up. The gym is actually a good place <laughs> if you're into working out, because you have somebody that's into what you're doing, also, and then also somebody who cares about taking care of themselves. And uh, also, a very good pickup line at the gym would be like. Excuse me, um, you, uh, I could tell by your strong shoulders that you really know how to use this machine. Can you teach me how? That could work. And then, hi, I'm Samantha. Thank that you. That could work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, oh, yeah, that, I have another tip. That, oh, wait, but fr saying? friends are number one. Though. Oh, yeah, friends are one. Because you get a background check on the person. <laughs> you already, like, already kind of know like what they're about, like what their history is. So you kind of got all that out of the way before you even waste any of your time actually i was just talking to my cousin about this because i do think friends are so good but you need to let your friends know that you're looking for someone and you want yeah. to be set up because yeah, people definitely. don't necessarily want to like just assume right. that you want to be in a relationship and you want to be set up if they want to hear some of your dating advice hit them uh well we kind of addressed a lot of it already but um always be confident be open to different things, like, you know, different suggest, or just actually just being open in general to like meeting people and don't be so negative when you're going out there. Like you might've went on like 20 dates that didn't go well and you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna go on another date just to go on another date. It's probably not gonna work out, but let me just go anyways. Don't think like that because you're already like failing before you even get out there, you know? Um, so be open, be positive, be confident in yourself. Always come, always like have real confidence because if you if you're not confident in yourself, the other person's gonna sense it right away, and that's unattractive. So don't worry about like it's not about what you look like or anything like that. Confidence like shines more than anything. Also, duh, you forgot something you say all the time. What's that? If a guy wants to be with you, he will make the effort, and he will yeah. want show you he wants to be with you. Yeah. Exactly, and if he doesn't, then he, you know he's not serious, or like, or vice versa, or if, if she, you know, she's not serious, or whatever the case may be. So, I uh, was. Um, both people have to make the effort, and if they're not, somebody doesn't want to drive a half hour to come see you, or like, they're waiting the next day to like text you back, playing that game, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna wait 12 hours before I re respond to this message. 
or, or like whatever, or vice versa, you know, guys and girls both play that game. Like if you have people playing those games, don't even bother. And don't play those games yourself because it might sound cool or it might sound like, oh, let me play hard to get, but guys don't like that. And if guys do like that, then they're gonna be playing those games too and they're not looking for something serious. Okay, someone said if a guy says he's into you, but I only text, but he only texts you a few times every other day, does that really mean he's into you? He has three kids of his own and just got out of an eight-year marriage nine months ago. I need help. Should I keep it going or end it? I mean, it depends. If you feel like if you feel like you gotta keep it going, in my opinion, like that means that you're forcing it. So I wouldn't keep it going. I mean, th from what from what it sounds like. Because it shouldn't be it, it shouldn't be hard like to make these things happen. It shouldn't be forced. If yeah. it, if it's forced, I mean, there's work you have to put yeah, into it. Yeah, there's work that you have to put into it. Like you know, but it shouldn't be like an it shouldn't be a chore, especially in the beginning. It shouldn't be a chore to try to like make something work with somebody. Yeah. If it if it does, then it's like it's like I said, like Christina said before, it's trying to fit a square into a, into a circle. You know what I mean? It's just like yeah. It's just not it's not meant to be. It should just fit. And then just like keep it keep it going and then there'll be work that needs to be put into it down the road and like along the way but like if it's if it's that difficult and it's and it sounds like you have to keep it going then probably not yeah. you guys thank you so much for watching our q a i hope you like this if you have, i hope it was informative yeah if you have more relationship questions for us or you want dating advice let us know in the comments below I think we'll have to do another full video worth of like dating advice and yeah, marriage tips because we have a lot more marriage tip questions. Um, but that will be in the next video. Subscribe, like, and comment below. Please. Turn on your notifications as well. Yes, we have a and lot of, a lot of good stuff. And let, we have so many fun videos. So let us know what you guys want to see next. All right, bye guys. Peace out.